Hello everyone, my name is Benjamin Skiva. I am a PhD student at the Communication Networks Institute of the TU Dortmund University. My talk is about cooperative data rate prediction for vehicle applications and how it could be realized in future 6G networks. Uh, I apologize that I'm not able to attend the conference in person. Unfortunately, my area where I live in, which is North Rhine-Westphalia in Germany, has been declared as one center of the coronavirus and so I had to miss the conference. The talk is structured as follows. At first, I'm going to motivate the need for data rate prediction for anticipatory vehicular networking scenarios. Then I'm going to show what already exists, which is the related work. Then I'm going to show what we did in this work, which is cooperative data rate prediction and how we did the measurements in the field as a proof of concept. And finally, I'm concluding my talk and I give an overview about uh, what to do with this knowledge. Data has been called the new oil of the automotive industry. So there's a forecast by Intel which says the averagely driven autonomous car will generate 4,000 gigabytes per day related to the various sensors which are installed within these cars. So for a data analysis perspective, this is great because if we have a fleet of vehicles and they are connected to a cellular network, then we can have our servers which do data analysis and exploitation for predictive maintenance and traffic flow optimization. And basically we deploy a mobile crowd sensing system here where everyone contributes to the global knowledge. However, for the network infrastructure, this is a challenge because of two effects. There's, the first one is channel dynamics and the second is coexistence. So for the channel dynamics, this means that the data transmissions will be impacted by the measured network quality. Effects like packet loss will occur and uh, the modulation and coding scheme will be highly dynamic with respect to the network quality. Power consumption as well as if the, we are far away from the center of the cell, we have to apply much higher transmission power and this also drains the battery of the mobile device. For coexistence here, we have a shared radio medium, and this means that these machine type communication systems will compete about their available resources with other cell users, such as humans. One approach to address these challenges is client-based opportunistic data transfer. This is opposed to network-centric approaches, which aim to increase the network capacity, either by straightforwardly uh, adding new enode B, so through means of network densification, or from the algorithmic side, so through introduction of novel sophisticated resource schedulers. Here you see a trace of the SNR acquired from a real-world measurement campaign in a vehicular scenario. And you see that the network quality varies from low to high. And from a resource efficiency perspective, we want to exploit connectivity hotspots because we assume that there we achieve a good resource efficiency, we can apply very high modulation coding schemes and only require low transmission power. On the other hand, we want to avoid transmissions during connectivity valleys because there we have to deal with retransmissions and apply a lot of transmission power to get our packets to the receiver. And if we now consider a typical MTC application, it sends its data in a periodic fashion. So this means it will encounter low, medium and high periods of channel quality. Opportunistic data transfer means to consider this information for the transmission process itself. And one approach here is the channel aware transmission scheme, which is called CAT. And this one computes a transmission probability based on the measured metric. And this metric in our case is the SNR. So we, have, we are skipping the math here, but we have a mathematical model which then derives a transmission probability and there is a scaling factor alpha which allows to uh, configure it a bit how much it should rely on very, very high values of the measured network quality. So based on this probabilistic model, uh, which uses the SNR as a transmission metric, we made an extension which is called MLCAT, machine learning CAT, and hereby we combine RSRP, RSRQ, CQI and SNR within a machine learning based prediction model uh, to a predicted data rate value, which is the a predicted TCP data rate. And this work also got us the best student paper award at BTC Spring 2018. Here in the plot, you see the predicted data rate versus the measured data rate. 
and you see that we achieve quite a good fit. There are errors. So um, the blue spots here show measurements from a highway scenario and the red ones were measurements uh, from a suburban scenario. For the errors, they can be characterized into underestimation and overestimation. Underestimation is not that much of a problem, um, although there are also errors. Um, this means here that we get more data rate than we predicted. And what we want to avoid is overestimation. So here are some real world measurement results. Um, as mentioned earlier, the periodic approach achieves quite a low data rate, which is around 7 Mbit. And then the classic SNI based CAT approach is around 11 Mbit. And now with the introduction of machine learning within a transmission process, we achieved an average 18 Mbit, which is quite a massive improvement here. Now, as I said, um, we use mainly indicators from the network context domain. So this means RSRP, RSQ, QI, and SINR. The problem here is that we are quite unaware of what's happening uh, for the available resources, so the network load. And this motivates our proposal for the 6G summit here. So if we want to optimize our transmission scheme, we need to optimize the end-to-end -end data rate prediction accuracy. So this means to not only consider the measurable passive channel quality indicators, but also get access to the network load information. And a possible approach of doing this within future 6G networks would be the 6G network infrastructure itself announces network load information via de dedicated control channels. So this would be the optimal solution. Unfortunately, we cannot analyze the performance of such a system yet because there is no 6G. And in addition, we don't have access to a network infrastructure, including all um, the public cell users. So, but for getting an impression of what could be achieved in terms of uh, data rate prediction improvement, we apply a hybrid approach here. Basically, we use the static uh, control channel sniffer falcon i'm going to come back to it later uh, in combination with the mobile ue so here we still do the passive control uh, channel monitoring but in addition we apply control channel uh, estimation using this sdr based setup and then we can make some conclusions about how this could look like in 6g and what are the benefits of such an approach using cooperative data rate prediction Falcon is a tool which was presented at the last Globecom. And basically, if we have a cellular network base station here, an E-Node-B, and we are interested in the number of resources our mobile UE would get, then we need to get information about the other UEs within the cell and their um, traffic patterns. Unfortunately, there is no direct access to this information. So what does Falcon do? It decodes the PDCCH and then it applies different histogram based approaches and um, it allows us to derive information about the cell activity of these other users. So the number of active users, the number of acquired and free resource blocks, current MCS and TBS. Unfortunately, we cannot deploy Falcon itself in a mobile setup because of these buffering effects related to the history, uh, histograms this means we need to have one static Falcon deployment within one sector of the cell. And now we have all the components ready. So we can acquire estimations about the network load as well as about the network quality. And therefore we did a real world data acquisition campaign in the public LTE network here. So the scenario looked like this, we had a moving car which was connected to an LTE network and we had a server for the measurements and we performed measurements in uplink and downlink direction. In addition, we had three deployments of the SDR based Falcon sniffer, static deployments in all of the three sectors of the observed e -node B. And then we had our evaluation track. The measurements themselves, they looked the, like the following. So we captured the end to end data rate for TCP-based data transmissions in uplink and downlink uh, with a random payload size in the range of 
0.1 MB to 10 MB. And in addition, we continuously captured the passive network quality indicators, RSAP, uh, ETC, and some mobility parameters like the velocity of the car. And we did these evaluations in a high load scenario. This means at peak traffic hours, and this is also a university scenario. So uh, this was during lunchtime. And in addition, we did measurements at 4 a.m. in the night. So where we basically were the only ones who were active on the road. And here's the system model of the proposed approach. So we have UA-based measurements, the channel context indicators, the mobility context indicators, and the application context, which is the payload size of the TCP packet. And they form the client side feature set. Then we have the Falcon sniffer, which gives us some load information. This forms the network side features. And then we have active transmissions, so TCP uplink, downlink, and we get a measurement for the data rate. This forms the labels for a machine learning process. And then we brought these components together. This means for the client side features and the network side features, which were acquired in different devices, we had to synchronize them based on um, their uh, clock measurements. And then we did this in offline data aggregation stage. And also we performed feature analysis. So for the feature analysis, we applied different machine learning models and measured the relative feature importance. This means we started with one, with the most important feature, and then sequentially added additional features. And we only added additional features if the information which is measured as the data rate prediction accuracy was improved. This means the process stopped uh, if additional features led to a decrease in the accuracy. And um, for the uplink, this is the resulting feature set. So there were some redundancies in uh, network context information. And um, for the downlink, this looked a bit different. So you can see here for the downlink, we had more features from the Falcon sniffer side, which is also in compliance with related work in literature, which observed that in the downlink, um, the amount of resources is more crowded and therefore um, this load information is more important than the network context information. We then compared different machine learning models uh, for the UE-based prediction and the cooperative one in uplink and downlink. And for the uplink, you can see there is a performance improvement of applying cooperative approaches by up to 25%, so 25% error reduction. And for the uplink, this is quite similar. So here we have about 30% of error reduction, which means that we achieve significant improvements by the proposed cooperative data rate prediction approach. And for the machine learning models, we saw that the random forest um, achieved the best performance, which is also com in compliance with related work. We therefore decided to take a deeper look at the random forest prediction model. And here's a short recap about how random forests work. So they consist of different random trees, which are trained on a random subset of the training data and a random subset of the features. And if we now zoom in a bit in this tree, we see here that they are binary decisions. Basically, they take a look at the feature um, and then they go for one path or for the, uh, for the another. And in the leaves of the trees, you get the results then. And here, this is an ensemble method. This means basically we take the results of each tree and then we do a averaging. And uh, here, the example only shows nine trees, but for our evaluations, we did 100 trees. And here are the results of the random forest prediction model. In more details, we start again at the uplink direction and consider at first the UE-based prediction performance. Then we have the network-based prediction performance. So this corresponds to only using Falcon and no UE-based measurements. And finally, the cooperative approach. And what you can see here is that the purely UE-based approach has a large amount of outliers. So this corresponds to the missing network context information. And what is interesting here is that the purely Falcon-based, purely network-based approach is quite imprecise. But if those methods are brought together, you can see significant improvements. So the 
confidence region here is narrowed and the outliers are a bit filtered out. For the downlink, we see some civil, uh, similar observations. So at first, again, the UE-based measurements, then the network-based measurements, and then the cooperative approach. Only using UE-based measurements results in a model which, uh, which does not work well for large data rates. So as I said earlier, in the downlink, often the dominant effect for the data rate is the congestion and not the network quality. We see this also in the network-based approach, which is here significantly better than for the uplink. It's still not good. But again, if we bring those approaches together, then we achieve a better model than only the individual ones. So it improves here uh, its linearization as well as the confidence region. And here I conclude my work. So I've presented a novel approach for cooperative data rate prediction which could be realized in 6G networks where the network infrastructure actively provides load information to the network clients. And we have shown a proof of concept evaluation using LTE and we have shown that significant improvements for the client-based data rate prediction are plausible. Therefore, we recommend that the standardization efforts should go beyond network-centric approaches for machine learning and also consider client-based approaches. Thank you for your attention and my apologies again for not being here in, in person. If you have any questions, please contact me via email. Thank you.